In my previous videos about TV licensing, I first talked about when you would require a TV license, and secondly, what you can do when an agent visits or sends you letters through the post. And by way of a brief summary, if you are watching or recording live TV by any means, or watching BBC iPlayer, then the rules say that you need to pay for a TV license. And in respect of letters and visits from agents, unless there is a warrant issued by a magistrate to search the premises, you can simply ignore them, although I did say it's probably easier just to declare that you don't need a TV license because most people don't hear from TV licensing again for a period of two years after that upon which they might make another declaration. But in today's video I'm going to talk about lots of concerns that have been raised over the criminal conviction aspect of not paying a TV license fee and what effect this might have on you because it's twofold which will become clear by the end of the video so make sure you watch till the end. But first of all if you're new to me I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. I release videos every day and I do live Live streams on Sundays and I answer your questions left in the comments over at Black Belt Secrets which is my other channel linked in the description below so make sure you subscribe to both channels and hit the notification bell to receive future videos. So most people are aware that not paying for a TV license when you do require a TV license is a criminal offence which sounds pretty scary to most people and if you are prosecuted for watching or recording live TV or using iPlayer without a license it's punishable by way of a fine in the magistrate's court for up to a thousand pounds. Although it is worth noting however that there is a provision in law to raise this fine to four thousand pounds and this is found in the Legal Aid Sentencing and Punishment of Offenders Act 2012. But let's just slow things down and wind things back a little bit and let's start with the scenario in this video where you do require a TV license but you are not paying for it. And just to make the distinction I had lots of comments from people say that they do pay it out of fear that they might need it but actually believe that they don't. I would strongly urge that you look at the rules very carefully because paying for a license if you actually don't need one is a bit of a waste of money. But in this scenario if you should have a TV license and you don't pay for one then you may be liable to prosecution. The responsibility for investigating and ultimately prosecuting TV license offences lies with TV licensing and they are brought by way of a private prosecution and in doing so they have regard to the Code for Crown Prosecutors, the CPS or Crown Prosecution Service. But I'll come back to that in a moment. So first of all like any other offence there has to be an investigation stage. This is usually done by way of letters and visits to the property but as I explained in my previous video unless there is a warrant in place there is no legal obligation upon you to respond to such letters or to discuss matters with visiting agents on your doorstep. And on the one hand whilst I do promote a civil exchange and cooperation in most circumstances in this particular scenario it would be very easy to say the wrong thing and give the impression that you do need a TV license if in fact you don't. But regardless of whether you are cautioned or not Remember the first words of the caution, you do not have to say anything. So let's walk through this process a little bit. Let's assume that there's been several letters that you've ignored, there have been several visits by agents that you've ignored, but TV licensing believe that they have enough evidence to secure a search warrant for your premises because they are investigating you to pursue a prosecution. Now for this whole process that I'm talking about today there was a very interesting review drafted on TV license fee enforcement that was presented to Parliament under section 77 of the Deregulation Act 2015. So for a more in-depth understanding I will link that review below so you can download it and read it at your leisure. So in this scenario the only way TV licensing are going to discover evidence that you are contravening the legislation for TV license is to secure a warrant to search the premises and this is granted by a court if one of certain conditions are met. First of all the court must be satisfied that there are reasonable grounds to believe that an offence is being committed and that evidence of that commission is likely to be discovered on the premises. But this is also subject to a number of other conditions that should be met. Firstly that there is no person entitled to grant entry to the premises with whom it is practicable to communicate or there is no person entitled to grant access to the evidence with whom it is practicable to communicate or entry to the premises will not be granted unless a warrant is produced or the purpose of such a search may be frustrated or seriously prejudiced unless the search is carried out by a person who secures entry immediately upon arrival at the premises. And if the warrant is granted it provides permission to test and examine any television on the premises. And this can be done alone or in the presence of police officers although the report suggests that they usually do it with police officers unless it's a last resort. It should also be said that with a warrant the person may use such force as is reasonable to both enter and search the premises 
and police officers may also force entry if necessary. And as a further warning, any person who intentionally obstructs the execution of the power under a search warrant is guilty of a separate offence. But let's say that this has happened, they have executed the search warrant, found evidence that you are watching TV without a licence, and decided to prosecute you. As I said earlier, this is considered on the same basis as the Code for Crown Prosecutors, which is effectively a two-stage test. The first test is an evidential test, whether there is enough evidence to secure a conviction, and if there is, then they go on to the second part of the test, which is to consider whether it is in the public interest to prosecute. Now, there are some interesting figures in the Ministry of Justice consultation response of 2013 as to these prosecutions and the average fine. Firstly, the report shows that in 2013, there were 178,322 prosecutions for the evasion offence, of which 153,369 people were convicted. But of these, 152,664 people went on to be fined. And it's very important to note that this is an offence not punishable by imprisonment, only a fine of up to £1,000, although non-payment of the fine may become imprisonable, but I'll come back to that in a moment. The report also shows that the average level of fine imposed was just £170, and if that wasn't interesting enough, then thinking about what people understand this conviction to mean makes things a little bit more interesting. You see, most people think of a criminal conviction as a one-size-fits-all. If you have a criminal conviction, you have a criminal record. But as usual, it's not quite as simple as that. Whilst it will be wrong to say that this is anything other than a criminal offence, there are different types of criminal offences, known as recordable and non-recordable offences. The main difference being recordable offences are those that are going to be held on the central police database. In other words, if there is a standard DBS, or Disclosure and Barring Service check, it is going to flag up any recordable offences that are on the police national computer. And this includes, of course, all of the more serious offences, and usually any of those that are imprisonable. However, for the initial offence of evading the TV licence, this is a non-recordable offence, meaning it will not go on to the police national computer and not be returned in ordinary searches. However, for the initial offence of evading the TV licence, this is a non-recordable offence, meaning it will not go on to the police national computer and not be returned in ordinary searches. Unless, as in some very rare instances, that it is included with another offence that is recorded on the same conviction, which is then recorded on the police national computer. Otherwise, non-recordable offences are only likely to be held at the local police station, and it is the police national computer that the Disclosure and Barring Service is essentially checking for a record of your criminal conviction. But it is important to flag up at this stage that if you are, say, applying for a job and they require you to disclose all criminal convictions, whether or not recordable, then you would have to disclose the fact that you had a conviction for non-payment of a TV licence. However, most job applications will only require you to disclose recordable offences, which obviously are the more serious. Other non-recordable offences, believe it or not, include careless driving, driving without insurance, and some other driving offences, such as speeding. A stark distinction should be made, however, if you are fined for non-payment of a TV licence and then taken back to court because you refused to pay that fine. Worse still, if you are imprisoned. This may very well result in a recordable offence, which would go on the police national computer and would be disclosed in any DBS check. But otherwise, a very broad summary of the situation would be that if you are in a position where you are not paying your TV licence when you should be, you are discovered, there is a warrant issued, they find evidence, take you to court and prosecute you. The likelihood is, the statistics show, the average fine is £170 or so. And so long as this is paid, this is not a recordable offence, will not go on the police national computer, and will not usually be disclosed under a standard DBS check. And in any job or other application that requires you to disclose all recordable offences, you will not need to disclose the original non-payment of a TV licence offence. Although if you were taken back to court for non-payment of the fine, then it is likely that you will need to disclose that, because that is more likely to be a recordable offence. But as for the first offence, non-payment of the TV licence, there is also a rehabilitation period, after which the conviction is known as spent. In other words, you would no longer need to disclose that in any event. 
and for this offence the period is just 12 months. And this can be found in Section 5 of the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act 1975. So whilst non-payment of a TV licence is a criminal offence and should be taken seriously, I wanted to clear up just how serious or not so serious a lot of people think it might be, because there is a difference between recordable offences and non-recordable offences. But as always, neither this video or anything else you read online should be taken as formal legal advice. You should speak to your own lawyer even before answering any questions of TV licensing agents or even police officers whether or not under caution, because you have the right to legal representation and to speak to a lawyer before doing so. So in the meantime, I hope this has helped you to understand the criminality of TV licensing a little bit more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.